All right, guys, starting where we left off, we're going to create a register endpoint to allow our users to register a new account. Um, so, so to do that, let's go into our auth.js routes file, or route file, and let's do this boilerplate stuff with importing our end bars and, and different packages we need. Um, I think I left out that auth server. We're going to need to put that in there somewhere. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're, we're going to need to add JWT to our end bars in app.js. Okay, and then in, auth, in our auth server end bars, we're going to add another middleware. And then just change this app. Uh, you can do it however you want. I'm going to change all instances of the word app here. Oh, not that one, but I can change that later. Do auth server, just to make it a little easier for myself to keep track of the difference between the two. Um, and everything else should be good. OK, so if we go back into our routes, uh, we'll keep adding some imports. And you know what? We can even models. And then we'll import bcrypt jot equalize from mbars requires. So op, I'll show you what that is later, but it's just allows us to use different operators in our sequelize objects. Promiseify. Uh, essentially converts a normal callback, uh, a function that uses a callback um, scheme into a promise. Uh, so we can use dot then or dot catch or await on it. We're going to create a new route on our auth server, just like we did on our Pokemon server. Instead of app, it's called auth server because that's what I called it. Uh, and this one is just going to be called register. This is going to allow our uh, users to register a new account, and then they'll be able to log in with it after that. So first we need to get, uh, they're going to be passing in some data through the request body, just basic user data, like their name, their username, their email, password, etc. So what we're going to do here is that's where we're going to be getting the data. So we're going to do name, if you want, you can separate it out into first name, last name, but for simplicity, I'm just doing name. Password, picture. Uh, picture, if you remember on our user object, that's just a URL to the picture. And that can totally be null, doesn't need to be set. Hometown ID is uh, the ID corresponding to a location in the locations table. And then their gender, uh, I think, the way I have it so far is all our users are either N or F, uh, but I, it could totally accept whatever you want. Okay. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is check and make sure our password meets the requ their password meets the requirements that we set. So first we need to make sure, did, did they even put a password in? If they did, we can say, okay, so they did. So the next thing, or, so is password set, or is their password length the right length? Um, so that's where we're gonna use our process.n main password length. If you remember in the last video, we used this .m file and set our min password length to 10. Um, so we need to check, is their password length 
at least. So, uh, so we're actually doing a, a, an opposite check if it's less than the, the right password length. Um, I'm just going to put a 10 in here that just says what base number system we're using. Um, it's just a convention I like to do. So basically, if they didn't put in a password or their password length is less than the required password length, we're going to return an error message. We're going to use 400, which is a bad request. They didn't do the right thing. And our message is going to be something like, there was a problem registering. Uh, make sure your password follows the guidelines. And the front end, the, the web app or mobile app or whatever they're using should tell them what those guidelines are. So we don't have to outline those here. And then try. So we're gonna we're gonna do a try catch because the stuff we're writing next definitely has room for error. In the try block. We do, we're going to create a salt. Uh, if you don't know what salt is, it basically just, it's something we add to our password um, when we hash it. So that, you know, if two people had the same password, they'd at least have a different salt. And so in the database, their password would appear different. So what I'm talking about with that is in our, in our database, we don't want to store their password as it is, uh, because if someone hacks our database, they have their password, they have all the passwords. Uh, so instead, what we want to do is we want to hash or encrypt our password or their password. I keep saying our password. And we're going to use bcrypt to do that. So what we do is we pass in their password and salt. The salt is going to be different for every single user. So even if every single user set their password as password123, since their salt is different, the hash is going to be different. So if anybody does access the database, uh, and they look at all the password hashes, they're all going to look different and they won't know who has the same password and who doesn't. It's just a security thing. So then we'll do, we're going to create a new user or trainer with SQLize. We're going to pass in all the things that they sent us. Email. Now you might want to do some, um, validation on the email and make sure it's a valid email. I'm not going to do that for simplicity's sake, but the password, we're going to not, like I said, we're not going to save their password. We're going to save their hashed password. Picture. That picture could be null. Um, we want to make sure if it's undefined, if they didn't define it uh, with JavaScript, it's going to be undefined. So we just want to pass in null instead. And then hometown ID, same deal there. Gender, again. Birthday. Birthday is going to be a little bit different. We're going to use something called a turner, ternary. Uh, a ternary, the way it works. A ternary is like an if statement on one line. An if else statement. So you have if birthday is not null essentially or, or if birthday is defined then uh, parse that birthday because they're sending us a string into an actual date object otherwise if it's null uh, or if it's not defined just set it to null and again birthday is optional they don't have to put that um, i just realized right here we're not doing any validation on these fields um, these are required name, username, email, password, we are doing validation there. So what we're going to do is if not name, we're just going to send the same thing and just change the message a little bit. There was a problem measure, uh, registering name is required. And then we'll just Duplicate that a couple times and do the same thing with username, the same thing with email. Change this to username is required, email is required. And that way we know these are not ever going to be null because they have to set those. So we don't have to check for null here. And once we create this, 
uh, once we create the new user in the database, we're going to just send success and they're done. So 201 uh, is different from the default, which is 200. 201 is also successful. Um, it just means created. So the user is created. It's a good convention to use the, the correct uh, HTTP status for whatever you're, you're doing. So thanks for registering. And then at the end here, we will do, in fact, we don't need this next here because we're already, we're just returning the status. That's, that's enough. Okay, so in the, in the error, uh, in the catch block, if there's an error, we're gonna do a couple of things. So first we're gonna check if the error is something called a SQLize unique constraint error. What that means is uh, we can't have two users with the same username or email. So if there's already a username with that, this will this error will be thrown. And so we can catch it and send them a specific error message. So 409 means conflict. There's a conflict in our database. We're going to send them the message that there was a problem. Oops, there was a problem registering user already exists. And then if it was some other error, we'll just say that some error happened. So 500 internal error. We don't know what happened, but something happened that wasn't supposed to. There was a problem registering. Then we'll add the error in there so they can figure out what the error actually was. And yeah, that's all there is to the register endpoint. So let's go ahead and test that. So type in node app.js. Okay, we had an error. Let's see. Oh, in app.js, um, we didn't import JWT or JAW. So let's just put that import up here. Require JSON web token. Run that. Okay, so we got Pokedex API listening on port 3000. That's good, but auth server ex exited with code one. So something, something wrong happened there. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Okay, so we don't know why it exited, but the one way you can check to see if it exited is just run auth server directly. So type in node auth server.js. It should give us the error. Yeah, there is right there. Okay, so it looks like it just had a small typo. You may not have had this typo. Uh, in my routes auth.js file on line 46, I'm going to go there. Line 46. I had this unexpected token period. So await.models. We want to remove that because actually we're doing await space models. Let's go ahead and clear that. And again, let's just run our auth server by itself just to make sure we don't have any other errors. Looks like we do. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so same thing, line 54, unexpected token semicolon at the end of the line. So yeah, I just need to remove that. That should actually be a comma or nothing. Uh, I like to add commas at the end, no matter what. And then let's run it again. Okay, that time it worked. So we'll close that and we'll run our app.js, and we should see both of them running. Okay, perfect. So they're both running. We can see which ports they're running on. Now let's try registering. So just type in, uh, you know, the same thing as normal, HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 4000, because it's our auth server slash register. And in our body, uh, you just want to put in your your information. So make sure to include all the fields that are required at least, which are these four. And then these are optional. So whatever you want there. So we go ahead and send. 
there was a problem registering. Make sure your password follows the guideline. Okay, so my password for some reason was incorrect. Let's count how many characters. I have 12 characters, so that should be fine. Um, maybe, let's see here. Password. This part, the comma 10 on the parse int, I need to move it inside that second bracket or that second parenthesis. So that wasn't something that was caught. That's called a runtime error. So it's there was no error when we built our project. But once it actually ran, uh, it didn't work as we expected it to. So let's just restart that, so save it, restart it, and let's try again. Thank you for registering. OK, so if we go into our table, our database now, um, let's open, there it is. And you go to browse data, go to trainers, we should see. There I am right there, Matt. And you can see I've been testing this. Um, there's a, obviously a break. I, I deleted a lot of the users because I kept creating the same one over and over again to test it. Um, but yeah, if you look here, that is not the password I typed in. This is this is a hash. Uh, so we, looking at this, there's no way you could possibly know what my password is, which is perfect. Um, and then everything else looks right. I didn't put a picture in. I you know put my hometown ID. This is my birthday, supposedly. It's not my real birthday. Uh, and yeah, everything looks good there. So if you had a problem. Uh, you should see a message that you can track down in your code, hopefully. Um, if, for instance, if you get a status 500, which you can see right here. So I had a status 201. If there's a status 500, then you know there's some other problem, uh, maybe with SQLize creating your, uh, your user. You can go in here, and you should see an error message. Um, and you should also. Oh, actually, you know what? You won't see that error message because we're catching the error. What you will see is you'll see an error here. And additionally, I think it's not a bad idea to console the console.error the error message. And then uh, you'll be able to see it in here. So play around with that. Uh, you know, you can create a few users if you want. Uh, one thing I will mention is that these users in here, um, their, their password is actually all the same. So if you want to log in as them, you, you can. I will just, their password, I, I put it in the readme file of the repository, but their password is just, I want to be the very best. If you know Pokemon, it's from the theme song. Uh, but it, you know, it looks a little weird, so. That's it right there if you want to log in with them. Of course, you can't log in yet because we don't have a login endpoint, which we're doing in the next video. So stay tuned for that.